welcome back um this week on the weekly loaf of bread we will be going over the first book of nephi um chapter one um so to start off the first book of nephi it starts with nephi giving an account of kind of the, what the book is going to be about um and if we go back to the brief explanation and we go to right here where it says introductions in a non-italic typeface such as in first nephi and mosiah chapter 9 are also part of the sacred text so we learn so we know that what is written here all of this is all written by nephi the sacred text so if you give that a read it'll give you a, a quick explanation of what the book of nephi is going to be about and then as we go down to here, of course, it gives the header uh, to give you what the chapter is going to be about. So um, as we jump into the first book of Nephi, I think some of the major points in verse 1 are seeing that Nephi talks about that he was born of goodly parents, um, which is which is something to point out, is that his parents, they were, they were good to him, that they did good things. And that not only were they goodly in the way of being righteous and whatnot, but they were also goodly in a in a wealthy way. They were pretty wealthy in the land of Jerusalem. Um, it never really states what Lehi's uh, profession is, but a lot of people have speculated that it is that he's um, a I guess a um, what would you call it? Um, I want to sell say like a salesperson, but it's not a salesperson. Um, um, a, what would you call it? Um, ah, well, I can't think of it right now. Um, but it's where he's able to a, oh my gosh, a, a kind of like a shop owner, I guess, but it's a different word. I can't think of it right off the top of my head for some odd reason. Um, which I'll give explanation when we come across this stuff. Um, and then I think another thing in this is he was taught somewhat in all the learnings of my father. So I guess that, that kind of points out. Um, so his father's trade, with, again, we don't know what it is, but he was taught somewhat in all the learning of my father. So he's taught somewhat in like everything that his father has learned. Um, and then it talks about the aff aff afflictions that he that he has caused in the course of his days, and it talks about that he's going to make a record. Um, and then it talks about um, the record being in the language of his father, which is right here, the language of the Egyptians, um, and the learning of the Jews, which is important because, of course, at that time the uh, Jews just got released, or a couple of years down the line, just got released from. Egypt, and so they've got the language of the Egyptians still, and the learning of the Jews, of course. And then he talks about how this is um, his own work, and he knows, and he it's according to his knowledge and whatnot. And he gives, um, I guess, his own um, testimony about that. And then it talks about when this is commencing. So it was in the time of King Zedekiah. Um, and it talks about that there were other prophets as well. And that they were prophesying that the city of Jerusalem was going to be destroyed, or AKA going to be um, destroyed by the Babylonians. And then it talks about Lehi and his family, or his dreams and his um, prophesying. And this is a big explanation of kind of the dream that he has, which starts off with him seeing a pillar of fire upon a rock. And then he. Where he goes back home after he, he encounters that, falls asleep, has another vision, and it talks about that he the heavens were open and he thought he saw God. So this is kind of putting in perspective that it's probably from a distance. He probably wasn't up close. So he was saying that it was most likely God, but he wasn't 100% sure, so he's not going to say that he saw God himself. But he did see the numberless concourses of angels singing and praising Um and then he sees Christ, um, which talks about one descending out of the midst of heaven, luster above that of the sun at noonday, so of course Christ. And then he talks about the 12 
uh, followers who are his 12 apostles that he calls. And then it talks about how that person that came down stood before him and gave him a book and told him to read it. Um, and as he read, he was filled with the Spirit of the Lord. And then he reads it and it talks about the destruction of Jerusalem because of the wickedness. And it talks about, again, the Babylonians may, many should be perished by, many should perish by the sword and many should be carried away captive into Babylon. And then it goes on and he reads, um, reads about many, many great and marvelous things. And then he declares like great and marvelous, um, I guess he praises God, um, in those sentences. And again, you can read the, what I've got highlighted if you'd like, or you can just go through and read it yourself um but i i really i really like this point right when he starts praising god because he literally just reads about the destruction of his 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 city the city he grew up in um and to me personally i would be pretty i don't know devastated um maybe not angry at god but i'd be pretty saddened but instead um lehi the father of nephi he turns it around and he he praises the Lord. He knows that this is the way of the Lord, and the Lord intends this to happen, and he's okay with it. He He's praising him for allowing him to see these things, that allowing him to be the prophet to prophesy to those people, which is just, a, I guess, a testimony to me, knowing that when times are rough, times come, that we just need to be praising the Lord, and he will help us through those things. Um, And then as we read on, Again, his soul did rejoice and was filled with, his heart was uh, was full, and yada, yada, yada. Um, and then Nephi speaks, and he says that he doesn't make a full account of what his father has written, because his father is making an account as well, um, which we know is the, the pages that Martin Harris, um, right, Martin Harris? I believe it's Martin Harris, loses the, the pages of Nephi, or Lehi, um, and then Nephi states that he's going to abridge or take shorter notes of what his father said for some weird reason god asked him to do that so he did it and luckily he did or else we would not know anything of lehi's dreams and then it goes on to speak about um how when mo, mo uh lehi keep on saying mosiah lehi um is out preaching and doing what prophets do you know that the jews mocked him and they made fun of him even though um i mean we literally saw this stuff that it was going to happen but they they were they just laughed and mocked him um and then the last piece that sticks out in the first chapter of nephi is the last few sentences that nephi states which i'll just read that it says i nephi will show unto you that the tender mercies of the lord are over all those whom he hath chosen because of their faith to make them mighty even unto the power of deliverance so those those are like mighty words stating that stating that the lord he he's going to show um i guess mercy to those that he has chosen because of faith We've got to have that faith. We've got to have that determination, that belief in him. And because if we do, um, he will deliver us. He will deliver us out of whatever circumstance. As in this one, it's talking about his family being persecuted because of his father, Lehi, being a prophet of God. Um, so yeah, that's kind of the rundown of chapter 1 of First Nephi. So hopefully you guys enjoyed. And if so, please go hit that like button and go watch my last video that talked about the introduction to the Book of Mormon. Um, so I hope you guys keep following along with this. Um, this is a fun idea of mine. Um, I'm trying to keep up on it the best I can. It helps me study, and I hope it helps you study. Um, if you have some insight on this as well, please go comment in the comments below. I'd love to hear it. All right.